I've drawn on nature for inspiration in a lot of my past projects, including mountains, leaves, and sunrises. But this one ended up becoming more personal than I could have imagined. As usual, I started with the basic design concept in SketchUp, but made a few changes as I started building. And there's only one place I know I can find exactly what I need for a unique project like this. This is Global Wood Source. I've been coming here for as long as I could remember, and just about every project you've seen on my channel has something from this shop. They have an entire wall of world-class quality book-matched guitar blanks. And the upstairs is dedicated to smaller chunks of wood for turnings or small projects, including pen blanks. For this project, I needed a sample of every color of the rainbow. And my friends at Global Wood Source were kind enough to provide me with everything I needed. I'm using maple, beech, cypress, eucalyptus, teak, walnut, hadouk, and wenge. Visit Global Wood Source in the Bay Area or check them out online. And for 10% off, tell them the Weber Woodshop sent you. After everything was rough cut to size, I started cutting it into strips on my table saw. I made a simple jig out of MDF so I could glue up those strips perfectly straight with even pressure. The packing tape ensures that nothing will stick to the jig. I'm using this figured maple for what I'm calling the sun in the center of the rainbow. I needed little half circle shapes, but figured I'd leave them long on one side to make clamping easier, and then I would trim off the excess after glue up. With the glue dry on my maple strips, I ran them through my sander. And then I made a router template to get a seamless joint between the maple strips and the circular suns. Bonus points in the comments section for anybody who accurately counts the number of custom jigs that I made for this project. Then it was time to make the main bent lamination form for the cabinet doors. The smallest radius would be bent around the circular sun. So that was my starting point. I started with two layers of MDF, but then added a couple more to make it wider. I guess it's time for a new hole saw, but I figured the smoke would look cool on camera. So, you're welcome.
After I made the bending form, I decided to add a gluing tray to make my life easier over the next couple weeks. To cut down on waste, I try to reuse parts of these MDF jigs as many times as I can. This massive bent lamination was going to require some custom clamping, but I found everything I needed at a local hardware store. Then it was time to prepare for the massive bent lamination that would become the rainbow cabinet doors. Fun fact, I cut over 500 strips of wood for these doors. Each color of the rainbow is made up of 18 strips of wood. And I hope you enjoy this time lapse I made of the process. Because it took about a month to create. Packing tape I used between each color allowed me to easily separate them. And I glued up the left and right sides together with plastic wrap in between so they'd be the same size and shape.
I trimmed off a little excess and then ran them through my drum sander. On the router table, I rounded over the edges of each color to create more depth. I needed a jig that would allow me to glue up the doors in a way that they would stay completely flat, but would also allow me to clamp it from below so I could clean the glue out of each joint before it dried. So this is what I came up with. After each color was glued and clamped, I used a drinking straw to clean up the excess glue. Then I wipe it down with a wet rag and finish with a toothpick for the detail cleaning. It was definitely tedious, but worth the extra effort. And for each color, I start the whole process over again. And again, and again, and again, and again. And when the glue dried, I had a perfectly flat door panel. But since that's only half of the rainbow, I had to disassemble part of my gluing jig and rearrange it for the other side. I had left each section long to make clamping easier, but it was finally time to trim it down. It seemed like each color section lined up perfectly from one side to the other, but somehow the half circles that made up the sun were a little off. And this actually led to a design change that I'm pretty happy with in the end. This time I used my CNC machine to cut some new circles out of the figured maple.
but instead of cutting them in half, I glued the full circle to one of the doors. With the shape of the doors established, it was time to start building the cabinet. So I traced it onto a piece of MDF to start making the next bending form. But I needed the bending form to be exactly three quarters of an inch smaller all the way around to account for the thickness of the plywood. So I'm using this router bit that uses different sized bearings to adjust the amount of material that it removes. After running it over one side, I use a straight router bit to flush trim the rest of it. And then I used that smaller curve and some double stick tape on another piece of MDF to duplicate it on the router table with that same straight router bit. and repeated the process another half dozen times. I used hot glue to build the bending form, but I didn't want the thickness of the hot glue to interfere with the shape or squareness. So I used the hot glue gun more like a welder, applying glue only to the corners of each joint. I've never used this bendy plywood before, and I was hoping if I laminated three layers together, it would be stiff enough to form the top of the cabinet. My money don't jiggle jiggle. But my plywood does. I used a strap temporarily to pull the plywood down onto the curved form. But with the plastic wrap in place, I was able to remove the strap. and it all just barely fit into my vacuum bag. A 
As soon as the glue was dry, I took it out of the bag to see how it turned out. I had to come up with a way to square up the bottom edges of the curved section, so I decided to use the same bending form to hold the curve steady on the table saw sled. And then the dado blade could cut the bottom edges of the curve perpendicular to the cabinet walls. This is officially one of those don't try this at home moments. It takes quite a bit of experience to do this relatively safely. For projects with veneer over plywood, I like to use solid hardwood on the edges of the plywood before I apply the veneer. So I'm preparing some solid mahogany to match the mahogany veneer I'll be using on the cabinet walls. Applying the solid mahogany edges to the flat pieces of plywood that make up the cabinet's sides, bottom, and shelf was pretty straightforward, but applying a solid mahogany edge to the curved section was a little less straightforward. I started with some wider stock and mitered the edges, and I used a few scraps and some instant CA glue to create clamping culls. It took a little head scratching and a lot of math to get to this point, but it worked out. To trim the solid mahogany edge, I'm using the same flush trim router bit from Bits and Bits Company that you've seen me use throughout this video, and it's an absolute beast. I literally design entire parts of my projects based on what this bit is capable of. It's a compression spiral cutter, which means that you won't get any tear out on the top or bottom of your workpiece. And the special Astra coating allows the bit to cut smoother, faster, and cooler, which extends the life of the bit. Follow the link in the video description and use the coupon code WEBER to save 10% on your order from Bits and Bits. When it was time to flush trim the straight pieces, I needed a way to stabilize them on the router table. So I built this little box out of MDF and just clamped both pieces on either side of it.
After waiting several weeks, my mahogany veneer had finally arrived. I custom ordered it with a heavy duty peel and stick permanent adhesive backing. And that means no vacuum press, no glue mess, no wait time, just peel and stick for instant gratification. I wanted to make sure everything was overlapping properly in the corners and edges, so I sketched out a set of step-by-step -step instructions for applying the veneer and assembling the cabinet. To press hard enough so the adhesive sticks permanently, I'm using a tool called a veneer scraper. The excess veneer is easily trimmed with a razor blade. To veneer the inside of the curved cabinet top, I figured for alignment's sake, it'd be easier to start in the middle and work my way out. I prepared the cabinet parts for glue up with some careful sanding and some masking tape to protect the veneer from glue squeeze out. The brad nails are temporary until the glue dries. After that, I reinforce the joints with screws that will later be covered by the outer veneer. I recently discovered a new use for my Festool mallet. I had to do a little rearranging in my small shop in order to fit the curved panel in my bench vise. Apparently, these are called dominoes. The easiest way I could think of to apply even downward pressure to this awkward curved top was a pair of ratchet straps.
I used a straight edge to joint the rest of the veneer pieces for the back panel. I started by just veneering the inside face. And then I traced the shape of the cabinet and rough cut on the bandsaw. And then after attaching the back panel with glue and brad nails, I trimmed it flush on the router table. Then I was able to apply the back veneer to hide all the nail holes and trim the edges with a sharp chisel. And finally, it was time for the main outer veneer. My number one concern was keeping the veneer aligned as I went up and over and down the other side of the cabinet. So I had the idea to use these spring clamps as weights. Starting at one end, I worked my way up and over the cabinet, peeling and sticking as I went. And the weight from the clamps on the other side kept tension on the veneer to keep it flat. Because it's imperative that these doors line up perfectly, I had to use adjustable hinges. But I found these cool black European hinges on the internet that I thought looked a little better than the typical silver ones. Instead of adding handles to the door fronts, I'm just adding a small hidden groove behind the top of each door as a finger pull. The design that I came up with for the feet was an afterthought, and admittedly would have been a lot easier if they had been created as an extension of the bent lamination for the original doors that I could have just separated with one cut. But hindsight's 2020, so I just had to build them from scratch. And by now you're pretty familiar with how this process goes. Luckily, I had a nice collection of leftover strips in every color of the rainbow.
I borrowed a curve from the top of the cabinet to use for the underside of the feet. For the structural part of the feet, I'm using more solid mahogany. To give this cabinet a purpose, I decided at the last minute to build a simple wine rack off camera. I wanted the rack to be removable, so I cut some self-adhesive felt into padding to line the sides, top, and bottom. And it installs as a piston fit.
I've created a line of t-shirts and other apparel based on all of my favorite woodworking designs, including this project. T-shirts, stickers, and other merchandise are all available on my website at reasonable prices. And as always, a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for encouraging me to go out into the shop late at night after the kids go to bed and produce these videos. If you want to join the club, get access to SketchUp and Laser SVG files, as well as discounts up to 50% off merch, or see your name at the end of these videos, just find me on Patreon. See you later.